This must be one of the most beautiful love stories ever told. Poets from all ages sang their love. This story was the tragic passion between the prince and then the future Portuguese king. Peter I and his beautiful and tragic lover, Inés de Castro, a story that continues to move us, is a timeless story, and all the feelings involved just makes us cry. Every time we read something about him too, we have all for a perfect epic romance in this true story, intrigue, hatred, jealousy, conflict of interest, a lot of it, murder, and love. The Prince Peter was born on April the 8th of the year 1320. It was from an early age that his parents, King Dom Alfonso IV and Queen Beatrice, the Portuguese rulers, tried to get him a suitable wife. One of the first attempts was Dona Branca of Castile that with just 14 years old proved to be very sick and weak young lady, and so Prince Peter didn't want to marry her. When the prince was between the age of 19 and 20, his father had enough of his son freestyle life and sent messengers to the neighboring kingdom of Castile, asking the hand of Princess Constance Manuel in marriage. The request was accepted by Castile rulers and so in 1340, large processions were organized for the princess arrival on horseback, surrounded by armed footmen several maids, even some relatives and personal servants. Was in this entourage that Peter I saw for the first time Donna Inés de Castro, one of the closest maids and friends of the Princess Constance Manuel, maid by whom Prince Peter fell madly in love almost immediately from the moment he had his eyes on her. Nevertheless, Dom Peter married Princess Constance Manuel as was expected from him in August, at the Lisbon Cathedral, with who he had three children, Louis of Portugal, Mary, Princess of Portugal and Ferdinand, who would become many years from then the King of Portugal. Even so, Peter never stopped to meet with Inés de Castro, starting a great romance. That became the favorite topic of the gossip conversations between members of the court. Among the people as well, these gossips soon reaches the ears of the king and queen. Peter's parents went furious with the relationship and as a punishment incarcerated Ines in their convent of Santa Clara in Queenborough. Peter was then forbidden to visit his lover there. But ignoring completely the orders of his father and king, he continued to communicating with Ines, hanging around the walls of the convent and by sending constantly letters to her. These letters were taken and brought secretly inside wooden boats through a creek, with the complicity of some friendly nuns to the couple. After leaving the exile, Ines de Castro circulated from castle to castle to finally later settled down permanently at her hunting lodge, currently known as Piers Estate, built by Queen Santa Isabel, Peter's grandmother, already deceased at the time. There the forbidden couple could finally have some peace and love, at least was what they thought. Their love produced four children, but bastards to the eyes of the court and laws of the time. Meanwhile in 1345, Donna Constance Manuel died giving birth to her third son, Ferdinand, leaving the way free for Peter and Ines. Widowed he came to live permanently with his beloved lady and their children. This situation didn't please at all the king, especially because the members of the court invented slanders, lies and accusations about Inés and her family. Dom Alfonso IV found himself in the middle of two problems. Peter at the time had only a legit heir to the throne, Ferdinand, son he had with Constance. This made the king think that if his son bastard children wanted to ascend the throne would later conspire to assassinate their half-brother Ferdinand and seize the throne for themselves, with the help of their mother's family, the Castro. The other problem was in fact Ines' family, especially her brothers. 
that were pressing at the time Prince Peter to take for himself the throne of Castile, which could lead Portugal right in the middle of the dynastic struggles of Castile. The king concerned by all these rumors and conspiracies that seemed to threaten the security and independence of the Portuguese kingdom, decided to meet with the high noble lords and councillors Diogo Lopes Pacheco, Pero Coelho and Alvaro Gonçalves, at the castle of Montemor. They decided that they had only one single solution to the growing problem and end permanently their love affair between Peter and Inés de Castro. That terrible solution was to murder the Galician noble lady at all costs. In January of 1355, Dom Alfonso IV and his three noblemen took advantage of the absence of Peter, who had gone on a hunting trip and so they went to the hunting lodge where they easily found Ines almost alone and unprotected. Ines immediately understood what was about to happen to her, and on her knees she begged for her life, if not by compassion at least for their small children's sake. She cried and tried to convince the group that all that took them there were just lies and nothing, more than rumors and that she was completely innocent. Her tears and entreaties had moved the king's heart who cowardly withdrew without a word leaving her, alone with Perro, Diogo and Alvaro. The three noblemen unlike the king had no pity or mercy for the Galician, stabbing several times in Esther Castro in cold blood. Despite her brutal death, the problems that hung at the head of Dom Alfonso IV were never resolved. When Peter found out about the terrible tragedy, he went mad and full of pain and anguish. Immediately he declared an open war upon his father. Castles were assaulted and burned down. Villages were sacked and he murdered all who passed before him, behaving aggressively. Not like a prince but nothing more than a mercenary. It was civil war. After a few months, the country had enough of Peter's uncontrolled grief and after some negotiations, peace was finally achieved between father and son. After the death of King Alfonso IV, in 1357, Peter came finally to the throne. All court knew that Peter still had urges of vengeance inside of him and so was no surprise that one of his first orders as a ruler was to send for the murderers of Ines. Diogo Lopes Pacheco managed to escape somehow to France, but Alvaro and Perro were caught while trying to run away themselves and they were brutally executed. Their hearts were pulled out of their chests while they were still alive and the bodies burned. All this while the new King Peter feasted and laughed at the terrible spectacle in front of him. He had gone insane with his pain. Such a profound love and tragedy gave birth to a well-known legend where Peter I ordered the unearth of Ines de Castro body and sat her on the throne and before all the Portuguese noblemen. He crowned her as Queen of Portugal and forced all the court present at the coronation to kiss the hand of his dead beloved. Peter legitimized his children when stating that he had secretly married Ines in 1354 in Braganza. On a day he didn't remember the word of the king, of his chaplain and of a servant with the evidence necessary to legalize the marriage. But to this day no document was found to prove Peter's claims. Peter I built an amazing tomb for himself and another equally marvelous for Ines. They are lying both in the monastery of Alcobasar, facing each other, as a wish of the king for they could face each other once more, at the day of doomsday. Two hearts, separated tragically in life, rest now in peace and death for all ages to come in a marvelous church, because true love can always overcome death, in a way or another. This video was made just for fun and entertainment, as well sharing of history knowledge. None of the images, sounds and music that were used in it, and modified to fit the clip, has a commercial interest. You, 
are free to share this video over social networks and forums all over the internet. But please ask if you wish to use it for work, school projects or other purposes.